Any future that will not require a change from you will not be different from the past. You should be more aligned with Yes, indeed, if there's a man to pray, there's a God to answer. Just wave to him, say something wonderful to him. Just worship him. Just worship him. Please give him a wave offering. Just wave your hands to him. Wave your hands to him. Jesus, we pray. Thank you. Thank you, our Father. Thank you. Thank you. This meeting is special. Thank you. Let your hunger rise up to him tonight. Thank you. By preparing for this meeting, God said to me, son, you have one major assignment tonight. Please listen, listen, listen. By preparing for this meeting, God said to me, son, you have one major assignment tonight. I think I've been here since past 12 because of what he said to do tonight. So the assignment you have tonight is to push men into seasons of their life. That's my major job tonight. He will still do many things, but this is my major assignment to push people into their seasons tonight. We had a similar meeting like this, I think, last two weeks. And, uh, the testimonies were outstanding. Please, I want for your heart to be set on God tonight. Let your hunger rise to Him. I have always tell believers, take your eyes away from men. Take your eyes away from men. Give me John chapter 1. Oh, I didn't plan this. Give me John 1 very quickly. Take your eyes away from men. Take your eyes away from men. What made heaven heaven is because God is there. It is his presence that makes it heaven. And so if he decides to relocate to hell, every one of us will wish to go there now. So it is his presence in heaven that gives heaven its identity. So when we say we are coming to his presence, take church of your mind. Picture him in front of you. Why many miss God is they set their eyes on men. They set their eyes on men. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of God to meet with him. It is beyond the four corners of this building. It's his presence. It's his very reality. Jump to verse 5 very quickly. And the light shined into darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Next verse. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Next verse. The same came for a witness to be a witness of the light. And all men through him might believe. Next verse. He was not that light, but was sent to be a witness of that light. Next verse. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. Let me say something here before I go to the main emphasis of why I wanted us to read this scripture. He said, that's the true light that lighted every man that cometh to the world. One time I was praying and asking God. I said, Lord... I am privileged to be born in a Christian home. What will happen to that Muslim brother? And God said, go and read this verse. He said, there is something I do to every man that comes to this world. I splash on him a light that will leave him searching for God. So that no man is left without an excuse. He said, this is the true light that lighted every man that comes into this world. So there is something I've done to every man. To know God and recognize Him when He sees God. 
Next verse, please. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Next verse. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Next verse. But as many as received him to them, he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Next verse. Which we are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Next verse. And the word, this is my emphasis, and the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld the, his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The most delicate moment to miss God is when he chooses to come in form of a man. And most of the time, in my little walk with God and experience, I found that he likes coming like that. That's why Paul caught the light in Hebrews 13. He said, be careful that you might entertain an angel without knowing it. Sometime in the will of eternity, he chooses to take a hold of the vocal cords of men and begin to speak to you. Take your eyes of men. I know everywhere I go, that's the first thing I say. Take your eyes of men. You will miss God. You will miss God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Bible said, We beheld his glory. We beheld his glory. One time Israel was praying, praying for their restoration, praying for their deliverance. And the Bible said, He came as a man. And they couldn't recognize him. They were looking for a spirit to fall from the heavens. And the Bible says, Jesus looked at Jerusalem and he wept for them. But they could not understand the time of their visitation. Most of the times, study through the scripture, he most at times like to come in form of a man. I beg you, take your eyes off him. So that when you have prayed for maybe 30 days, fasted for 100 days, and he chooses to bring the answer to you and decides to take a hold of the vocal cord of a man to speak to you, and you despise that word, you are hearing a voice from heaven. You are waiting for something to fall down. That's how the Jews missed God. So tonight, I beg you, we come to his presence. The same way you came for a meeting, that is how I came for a meeting too. I came for a deluge of his glory tonight. I came for a mighty visitation and impactation of God. One thing I ask God every day, Lord, as I come for this meeting every day, may my life not remain the same grace upon grace upon me grace upon grace grace upon grace the bible says he that watered should be watered also lord grace upon grace lift up your hands thank you you make my life so beautiful and as you are you have made me a runner there's nothing greater, there's nothing greater than this. That's why I love you forever more. You make my life so beautiful. And as you It's not in greater, it's not in greater than thee. That's, That's why I love you forevermore. The 
more I know you is the more I want to know you, Jesus. More of you, more of you, more of you, more of you, Jesus. More, more of you, more of you, more of you, more. Give me some hundred. I'm trying to follow the rhythm of the spirit to answer the questions of our heart. The Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his singing. Know ye that the Lord is God, is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Next verse. Enter into his gate. It's your job to do the entering. Most of the times we are anticipating a presence to come from somewhere. The Bible says it's your job to enter. It's your job. That's why most of the times we come to, to church. And some of them with some people there, you don't connect. I don't feel God. You are the one that had the problem. You were supposed to enter into his gates but you stood out now most of the times you begin to feel the presence of God in a way you have never felt before it plays shows how much you enter how deep you enter it's your job it's your job give me Exodus 16 Holy Ghost why am I changing my topic I don't know it's like I, tonight God wants us to correct the attitude in his presence. Attitude in his presence. Attitude. This is why it takes some people minutes to encounter God. Seconds to encounter God. And some years they keep coming to church. Their eyes is on the pastor. Whether he's truly anointed or not. It has nothing to do much with him. But with you. Give me Exodus. He said, I just pray. I'm on the right path. Holy Ghost. Give me verse 16. Pray the Holy Ghost, everybody. I love you now. I love you tomorrow. Oh, I love you forever. I love you So it has much to do with you than the preacher. It has much to do with you. If you made up your mind to come, it has much to do with you than the preacher. Exodus 16 69. I pray I'm on the right scripture. Good. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Gather of it every man according to his hunger. He said, gather the manna according to what? His hunger. The Bible says, an omer for every man according to the number of persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tent. Next verse. Holy Ghost. And the children of Israel did so. Watch. Listen. 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 Remember, it had nothing to do with God. The dimensions and the degree of manna he produced. He produced as much but he said they can only gather according to what? Yeah. He said, and the children of Israel did so and gathered some more. Listen, he gave an instruction. 
he said there is a protocol of the spirit it's not the deluge of his glory in his service that matters but how much of you can pray so he was teaching them a kingdom principle some choose they say no i'll gather more the bible says, and some gather less give me the next verse that's my emphasis and when they did met it with an omer he gathered he that gathered much had nothing over and he that gathered little had no lack they gathered every man according to their hunger it has nothing to do there are meetings where god can decide to release the heaviness of his presence the mightiness of his presence it depends on your heart it has much to do with you in the service than the minister it has much you can only carry as much as your hunger can sustain lift up your hands jesus jesus i don't know why god is driving me this way tonight Shilagabalagada, spread the Holy Ghost. Sila habindo hoskele na manshkali bedesh. Vreli gede basa baradis kome ledo sale na la haski bini. Pere na manshkele gede bosh. Shalala bagera asobaya. Please enter, enter, enter into His gate. It's your job. Enter, enter. It's your presence we've come tonight. You have not come to grace them or to see a man. He is present. He has much to do with you. So many of us have blamed preachers. Many of us have blamed the organization of the meeting. But you fail to realize it had much to do with you. Oh, it had much to do with you. Now listen, listen, listen. Wait, wait. Do you know in the days of old, the way they meet God, it takes sometimes three days to prepare for it. That's what the brothers of our, the, the other faith are trying to apply. You see them, they wash themselves. Kai, kai. They, 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 say ablush, they begin to make sure they are set to meet him. You prepare to encounter him. You prepare to come to church. Because the preacher can only do as much as God releases to him. If there is no question in your heart, there will be no answer for me to give to you. Yes, I'll be speaking over your head. I'll get you emotional. And you'll go, no change in your life. Sometimes I fast for a service. I fast for a meeting. Because there are meetings some that are potters. There are some meetings that are potters. But adventure the angel comes to stir up the water just that day just that day we've seen it over and over again in the body of christ over and over again where people miss out of god's visitations for their life now i did a message on understanding transitions of times and season please get it some of you have already truncated 20 years of your life already truncated years of your life in the spirit by a careless word by an heal action and ill thought you don't know that is a realm beyond this realm before every man is a syllabus give me first um, holy ghost give me second timothy 4 7 before every man is a syllabus you don't know whether the syllabus this evening is that you're supposed to be here but you felt you came to maybe a friend of yours invited you you just want to make your friend happy he said i have fought a good fight i have finished what my course i don't know your syllabus paul said he finished his give me hebrew, hebrew 10 7. Shut up, jesus oh God. give me hebrew 10 7. i don't want to take this message next week then i said no this is jesus speaking i come in the what volume of book that is written of me to do thy will there is a syllabus you are supposed to follow so that at the end you can say i have finished my course that is why i say take your eyes off men i learned it early in life you can do what you want to do sincerely nothing moves me about you because we might not have the same syllabus now many of you are here you're in different departments some of you engineering some of you sciences why should i copy a man why why should I compete? Any man that competes with it, with any man, he doesn't have a sense of mission. If you ever compete, 
you don't have a sense of mission. You are a fool. You are a fool. Because the Bible says they that compare themselves to themselves, they are what? They are unwise. You are foolish. You don't have a sense of mission. Lift up your hands. Your hunger. Attitudes in his presence. Number one. He said, you must be the one to enter. You must be the one to enter. Alright? Number two, we said what? Your hunger. Your hunger. Lift up your hands. Just worship him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We wait for you. We wait for you. Walk in the room. We wait for you. Oh, we wait on you. We wait on you. Walk in the room. We wait, we wait, we wait. We wait. On you. Here we are standing in your presence. Here we are standing in your presence. Shekinah, Shekinah glory come down. Shekinah glory come down. Here we are standing in your presence. Here we are standing in your presence. Shekinah, glory. Release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory come. Shekinah glory release. Release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory come. Shekinah glory come The fullness of your spirit Shekinah glory come Shekinah glory Shekinah glory Shekinah glory come Shekinah glory Shekinah glory Shekinah glory come Shekinah glory Shekinah glory Shekinah glory come Shekinah glory come I want to know you I want to see your face I want to know you I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you more. Yeah, 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 to know you.
Now, one time I was, I was trying to check a technology in the spirit responsible for divine speed. A technology in the spirit responsible for divine speed. And, and so I decided to take a little journey and study the life of Elijah. And in my bid to study that, I broke into something. I was shocked. The Bible says, I think first Kings 19. After he had told King Ahab, he said, Ron, there is about to be the sound of an abo a abundance of rain. The Bible says he said to pray. He said to pray. I wanted to see something there, but let's leave it to, to take my time. Did he really hear God or he made that declaration by himself? Leave it. He said to pray. And as he was praying, the Bible says he sent his servant seven times. Now, when you open the original Greek version of that scripture, each time he sent his servant is every hour. So what Elijah did was he prayed for seven hours. But I was trying to check something. The Bible says the seventh time, the servant went there and he saw a cloud like the hand of a man. What Elijah did was that he God will point God brought his invisible hand to the sky. That was the same hand that came on him. He has given a man seven hours on a horse ride. He pushed God. The Bible says he bent between his knees, his knees. Now, it's talking about a posture in the spirit. It's like you want to bet a reality. And preach to a point. He pressed the invisible hand of God out. It depends on you tonight. See, God's presence is mighty and heavy here. But it depends on what you are looking for. It depends on what you are looking for. I have trained myself to get anything out of his presence. I have trained myself in life to know that there is no healing presence, deliverance presence. Now God can choose sometimes to want to do works of deliverance. That's why we say deliverance presence. But his presence 
is his presence. Even if he's doing deliverance and I need healing, I can get it. The Bible says he was on his way to go and heal the, the, um, the daughter of Jairus. And a woman with 12 years, issue of blood. 12 years, issue of blood. 12 years, issues of blood. It's not as if she has blood discharge out of her. You know, they've taught us so many stories out of that. What she had was issues. But they are blood related. <laughs> she said, if only tonight. It might not have an intention for me. But by my hunger, I can't pull anything out of him. It's like God has configured himself in a way he can be gotten by the hunger of a man. No wonder in Isaiah 64. I think verse 7. He said, no one has teared up himself. Check that scripture for me to be sure it's correct. No one has teared up himself to take a hold of God. No man. Lift up your hands, everybody. Shake your mouth out of He said, behold, I will send my messenger. And he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Protocol to his presence. He said, the Lord, who you seek, shall suddenly come. But before then, he will send what? His messenger. No wonder in Amos 3, I think verse 7, he said, God will do nothing. Do you understand the phrase constructed? He will do what? Nothing. Except he first reveals it to a man. He said, surely the Lord God will do not. Okay, please go back to my scripture. That's not what I'm looking for. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. Go ahead. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. That he may, have, may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Next verse. And then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto God. Next verse. And I will come near to you. And I will come. Lift up your hands tonight. Pray. Lord, mantle me tonight. Release upon me your refiner smile. Touch me with your fuller soap. Release upon me tonight. Realign my will again. Lord, today realign my will. Realign my passion. Realign my pursuit in life. Refine my will again today. Refine my passions. Let me loose from that habit. Set me free. We can do your fire again in my life. Let me, let me, let me, oh God. Sit down. Maintain that atmosphere, please. Just as you are listening, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in Romans, said a carnal man cannot receive the things of the Spirit, for they are spiritually discerned. They are spiritually discerned. They are spiritually discerned. So never you receive God's word with your flesh. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Make sure it drops on your spirit. How many of us are blessed already? Just wave your hands. Should we close the meeting right now? We are blessed. We can close the meeting right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please celebrate somebody by your side. Those outside, please. I beg you. Sorry. No projector. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, our Father. We give you praise. 
please get your writing materials now if there is a man that I respect on the surface of this earth is a man that have a regard for revelation I don't fear a man that doesn't show respect for revelation I have made up how I can honor a man that doesn't show respect for revelation so please I beg you when you come to church come with your writing materials I beg you I beg you have regard for revelation show God that what he's dishing out to you is precious before you now one way we have killed the outflow of God is what I intend to do tonight is to make you take your attention away from preachers I know that it has to do much more with you than with the preacher much more much more sometimes even a preacher cannot be aligned to, with God but because of the hunger of his people he will choose to use that same man and touch them he used a donkey to pass his message across it has to do much with you show regard for revelation show regard show regard for revelation one way the body of Christ killed spiritual experiences in the church is because we fail to treasure spiritual things your lecturer teach you you write you just note you come to church you don't who do you show that you are no more so when you don't know how to treasure spiritual substances you lose them some of you you started you were god opened your eyes since the prophetic elite and then somebody got angry said, I I'm, like, I'm not prophesying again I told you I learned it the hard way. I told you my experience when I started playing with the prophet. One time, first encounter, I told you, God gave me a vision. And I said, I can't remember this. I know it was during these days of um there's this guy, is it Musa? That was the first match he played. I forgot which cup was that. I know it was this junior super. Heroes. And I told him, I said, Nigeria is going to win this match. <laughs> God told me, I saw the vision well. And then confidently, I went to watch the match with the people I told. <laughs> First half to zero. <laughs> I said, Kai, Kai. <laughs> I said, don't worry, Nigeria will score. Before they went on first half, they added in that last one, three. I said, what kind of life is this? We came back. Second, second half, I was still encouraging myself. I said, no, no, no. I saw the vision. I had to close my eyes to see it again. Is the cops still there? And then Nigeria scored. He added a one. Good. I added another one. So it was 3 2. I said, I told you guys. You no, know, in that kind of moment, you begin to brag. He said, I said it. I said it. I said it. Just hold on to God. Unfortunately, when it was like two minutes to go, I don't know the kind of mistake a guy did. In our scores. <laughs> so it was four two. <laughs> Kai. The insult I received. <laughs> I went home sad. And I made a vow. I said, Oh God. Is it because you showed me something? I told people and they are doing this to me. I will never again give any man a prophetic word. That's why most of the times I try to teach you from my experience. You'll be a fool if you need to pick lessons by going through my experiences again only a full way to learn by his experiences the easiest way to learn is by simple obedience experience remains the best teacher but the most difficult and baddest way to learn because sometimes only your dead body that leaves the lesson for others that's the slowest way to learn I can simply tell you if you touch this mic it will shock you you can obey and learn the lesson and then you can foolishly be attempting every day and you touch it and it shock you you also got lesson so in every way you learn that's why you must cultivate obedience to work with God and so I got angry I said I'm not going to say anything again God shows to me and I lost the prophetic gift for almost six years you know you are forcing yourself to see it he refused to come something you can just discern pick his voice you close your eyes concentrate it refused to come and I was praying and fasting I think if I didn't fast back for that gift, maybe 40 days, more than 10 times, to get it back. 
And I was asking God, Lord, why this difficulty? And he showed me a light in scriptures. He said, son, come. Never you carry your emotion into my work. Learn to treasure spiritual things. If I give you anything with ease and you joke with it, you will pay the next time to get it. So many of you encountered God at a very tender age. You were hungry for God. You were breaking into certain lights and dimensions you didn't pay the price for. And you got to a point, you just trivialized them and you lost them. And he showed me the story of Moses. The Bible says one time Moses was leading the children of Israel. He now said, wait, wait, Aaron, take care of them. God said, I should come meet him for 40 days and collect instruction for his people. And he went into the mountain and stayed there for 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible says, and God healed tablets of stone from a rock. Please, are we listening? And as God gives the commandment, it wrote itself. Are we following? And the Bible says, before Moses came back, the children of Israel decided to gather their gold and make a calf out of it so they worship a God and have a God at least to lead them. Alright? And that's why I tell people that says because of that you wear your ring. What they used was not your ring. They melted it first to gold. <laughs> Is that okay? So it was gold <laughs> that became calf, not your ring. What made it earring is because of the shape they formed. It's gold. Formed into a shape, then they call it earring. Are we following? Now, because of his, his, his love for God and the pain he has gone through to bring these people out of Egypt. You know, they were not facing Pharaoh. He was only the one facing Pharaoh. He knew the pain and the battle. So I said, Father, I can look at his son and impact him a gift. <laughs> he didn't know what I went through to get it. He feels that's how you get things. I'm teaching you how to treasure spiritual substances. Alright? And when he came down from the mount, he began to hear some shout. And he called his servant Joshua. He said, Joshua, come. The shout I am hearing. Is it a shout of victory or a shout of war? Joshua said it is confused noise. Confused noise. The Bible says, and he drew out of the mount, getting close and saw a calf being worshipped his emotion cheated him he took the tablet and broke it and God said wow wow this is wonderful God was happy this is wonderful when it was done it was a reconciliatory service and everything was done God said Moses come to the mountain when you are coming come with a chisel <laughs> this time you will chew out that tablet yourself when I learned that lesson anytime I see a young man come to me and say sir they are doing like this I, say, I beg you I beg you <laughs> don't follow my way it's not as sweet as you think so he had to do it with his own physical strength never you take whatever God does to you or dish out to you for granted never you do that it is as you treasure those little little things that you see more come if you don't treasure that little hand that little cloud you can't see the abundance of rain that's the problem of the church you want to raise dead bodies that little headache you prayed for it meant it looked like nothing you forgot that it was the same headache that the same anointing that cures headache that will still raise the dead one god learn to treasure spiritual things learn to treasure spiritual things hallelujah hallelujah Ancient secret to spiritual stability and growth, part two. Ancient secret to spiritual stability and growth, part two. Give me Revelation 3 and verse 1. Now, one thing we started last week, this series, and we'll be wrapping it up today. Now, I said last week, one thing God is doing in his body, he is restoring the ancient landmarks. He's restoring to the body certain secrets, patriarchs of old, generals of old, new, that made them who they were in God, that made them finish strong and finished well in life, that gave them stability in the face of situations and trials. What is it the Asian knew? What is it the Asian knew? That made them maintain the same zeal they had with God the first day they met him, 
even at their death point intact what did they know what kept them what sustained them that far revelation chapter 3 and unto the angel of the church inside is right these things he said he this thing said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars I know thy works that thou hast a name thou livest and art dead go ahead be watchful be watchful strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die there's the sponsor for the meeting there's the sponsor for the series we are God says son strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die So much rubbish going on in the body of Christ. Because of faulty foundations. Because of questionable Christian experiences. There were things we were supposed to be to told and taught at our early age in God. We are not taught. So now that responsibility begins to come on us. Now that we begin to face the heat and the blows of life. We begin to find out, guy, it's like I truly don't even know God. Now, have you gone to a meeting? But eventually, you are here 10 years in God, 13 years, 14 years in God, and you went to a meeting and feel like a man of God preached on your sermons, and you feel like you are not born again. How many of you have gone for a meeting like that? You felt you are not born again. That's because there was no stability. That's because there was no stability. You just knew God. Unfortunately for you, the next, next meeting you had an opportunity to uh, come for. He says, Grace Strength Ministries meeting. Miracle night. Angelic part two. <laughs> and you were sleeping under me. 24 elders. The cherubims and the seraphims. The men in white lining. Four living creatures. <laughs> Hallelujah. God says, Son, strengthen the things that remain now we started last week and we said the ancient secret the sense of old new that gave them stability that made them finish strong in life was the routine of daily christian disciplines the routine of daily christian disciplines so when you read the god's generous you begin to see some of them one will tell you now one will tell you like just um, wesley and john wesley 5 a.m. They are awake every morning to see God's face till their death point. But right now, an average Christian will tell you it doesn't matter. You can wake up any time you like. And for God, that the Bible says the manna must be gathered in the morning before sunrise. So that daily bread you are saying, Lord, give us this day, which I told you most of the time means what revelation. You can only gather it much more at the morning. Hallelujah. So we started last week with the discipline of prayer and fasting. And we begin to look at what its roles, it plays in our life as believers. How as we maintain the discipline of a prayer and fasted life. We grow in God and we have stability in Him. And then we shifted to the discipline of the study of scriptures and the memorization of scriptures. You must memorize scriptures. You must memorize scriptures. The early church that didn't even have the opportunity we have when they were giving space to minister to people. They didn't have the opportunity of opening the scripture to talk to them. Their life was the scripture. The Bible says, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. You must learn to memorize scriptures. If I say everybody now, say John 3 16, I'm very shocked. Some people will not say it. John 3 16. Even if they say they'll mix it with those 31. You must learn to memorize the scriptures. This is the discipline, the scent of old new. So when they were faced with situations that were around them to bring out the world out of them, they didn't need to be looking for their Bibles. Jesus could just stand in Matthew 4 and 4. He said, it is written. It is written. It is written. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we shifted to the discipline of a life of purity. The discipline of a life of purity. 
Now, one thing we said in the meeting last week was you must get to a point you have matured in these disciplines before you are able to carry responsibility in the church, carry responsibility in the body of Christ. We begin to see how the body of Christ has made people fall made them because they don't have stamina and they carried responsibility and placed on them and it made them more worse this was the lifestyle of the pharisee the bible said they will go every length to win one soul and make that person more worse than the devil i thought the message on pharisees in our days i don't know if they have the message and then we concluded with the, the discipline of what's the last one the discipline of early rising now in that um, point we begin to explore why the Muslim man will wake up early morning. He can as well pray anytime. In fact, he prays seven times a day. He has other times he prays. But why is it he can't joke with that morning prayer? Why? Now look at the issue we had a report last week in the news of a woman that does morning cry right in Abuja and they attacked her and cut off her head. What is it about that time that believers don't know? So please, I encourage you to get the part two of that message. So as we begin to continue in God, we must begin to master the art of this discipline. What you do consistently for 21 days naturally becomes a part of you. True men, great men in life, they discipline themselves to a point that discipline becomes an habit and then grew to a passion. Are we following? You must master the art of daily Christian discipline. Strive towards maintaining a life of prayer and fasting. Strive towards attaining a life of purity. And I told us last week, for some of us that say, oh, we are the righteousness of God. Oh, don't do this to the mic at this point, please. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, be holy for I am holy. It was your job to become holy. It's a day that are pure in heart. We see God. And I told you, the Bible says, if a man project himself from this, he shall be a vessel used for honor. So when you get to the bedroom, you see your soap there, you see your sponge. Right? What does the cleaning? It's the sponge and the soap. But you have to take it and bait. So be holy. Strive to maintain a consistent life of purity. That's why you see people without this solid foundation as they begin to grow in their knowledge of God and go find God, they get to a certain point, it brings them down. It weighs them down. Now we are ministers of the gospel. We have people come to our office and they begin to say, I'm struggling. Say, I'm struggling. Say, I'm struggling. And then you wonder what happened to the, this guy that first day he met Jesus. What happened to that fire? It was not sustained. Nobody told him Second Timothy, uh, First Timothy chapter four and verse seven that says, "Exercise yourself unto godliness." We are not taught to exercise ourselves. We are not, not trained to discipline ourselves to we attain what godliness. He said, "But rather exercise yourself unto godliness. Discipline yourself till it becomes your life." Hallelujah. Very quickly, we'll continue the. Number five. Number five. Number five, Christian discipline. You must develop yourself in. The discipline of giving. The discipline of giving. This includes your tithes, your offerings, and seeds. A true believer must master the act of giving. We were not trained earlier enough in God. That's why the church is in the state it is right now. Nobody taught us that the kingdom principle of God is that when you cast your bread upon water, you will find it after many days. Nobody taught us in the kingdom of God that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So the average Christian has trained his life to be a collector a collector not knowing that the bible says the borrower is a servant to the lender the borrower is a servant to the lender it is more blessed to give than to receive so you must train yourself 
you must train yourself to know that you measure the true words of a man by his giving, not by his receiving. The Bible says the life of a man does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. That's the Christian doctrine. No wonder everybody is looking for a good grade so they can have a good job and then prove to the world that yes, I made it in life. Who told you that's the definition of success? It is imperfectly fulfilling your purpose and assignment on this earth. If you fail in doing that, you have all men most misery. So two young men, young men came in scriptures. They said, Jesus, come and settle the case between me and my brother. Our father left an inheritance for us. He, he tends to carry everything. Jesus said, come, 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 come. The life of a man does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. It's the first definition of success. See, when you know this, the life will not put pressure on you. So many people are in a haste to prove a point to who? And most of the times, after you prove that point, you found out that they didn't really care. You are not the first to be wealthy. You will not be the last. Trace it. After you finished proving your point, you find out that the people you are trying to prove the point to didn't really give a damn about what you have achieved. So we must learn and master the art of giving. Offerings, tithes, and seeds. In Malachi 3, verse 1 to 10, or oh, verse 8 to 10, rather, give me Malachi 3, 8 to 10. Titan. Malachi 3, 8 to 10. Your tithe is not a free will giving. Your tithe is the payment God demands. It's a payment God demands. It's not an act of charity. It's a payment God demands. And so we were taught early in life that if you take the thing God did not give to you, he will take the one he actually gave you. So he told man, you can have all the garden of Eden. Don't touch this tree. Man touched the tree. He collected the garden. If you take what God has not given to you, he will take what he actually gave to you. So it's not a free will giving. It's a payment God demands. It's a bringing your tithe. One man I pray never to meet to pray for is a man that doesn't pay his tithe. I thank God for his grace to recognize as many of them as I can. At every junction of my life, people come to me for counseling or wanting or the other. One man I pray not pray for is a man that doesn't pay his tithe. Let me show you why. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, We are in a view, rob, have we robbed thee? in tithes and offerings next verse you are cursed with a cost how can i pray for a man god himself cost that's why the bible says we shouldn't learn on any man suddenly because you can contact the cost of a man there are people most of the times i want to pray for god so stay your hands so you don't contact their curse you are cursed with a cost if god costs you who can bless you that's why there's so much object of poverty in the body of Christ. We are not taught this principle early in life. The discipline of giving. Your tithe is what God demands. It's not a free will giving. It's not an act of choice. That's why the Bible says, pay your tithe. Just the same way you pay tax. Now, you see why the American culture is successful. They indoctrinated this culture early enough in their, in, in their constitution such that the government knew that Christians are supposed to pay tithes. If you check the origin of the American culture, their, culture their, their constitution was drafted out of the Bible by great man um, George Washington. Are we following? Now, what they did was even till date, that's why with all the shakings, they tend to stand financially. An American, average American, is taxed on 85% of his income. He said 10% is to God. So they don't tax the man on his complete salary. They tax an average American. Go and trace it. On only 85% of his income. Providing him an opportunity to pay God tithe. That's why that land, that city, that nation is still standing today. It was built 
on some disciplines. We know right now there are so many things they are pulling them down, bringing it down. And you see the shakings already. But that land became strong. That nation became strong because it was built on this discipline. You must master the art of this giving, the discipline of giving. So your tithe is a payment God demands. It's not a free will giving. Your tithe is a circumcision of your money. Your tithe is a circumcision of your money. Your tithe is a circumcision of your money. The Bible says when you pay your tithe, it says open the windows of heaven. And if you don't, it said the devourer will come to take your money away from you. If we want to cure the abject poverty in the church. Now I said this last week. I said during the fasting period, I was hearing some stories from the, um, the brothers of the other faith. They fed themselves completely 30 days. Completely 30 days. No stress, nothing. When it comes to economy power, they will beat us. Because they understand the act of giving. See how many monks they've raised. See how many monks. To the best quality they can. But come to the church now and say, and we need, you swear they are raising fund for 500 naira. So I'll give 20 naira. So I'll give 50. So how much is still remaining? How much is still remaining? Okay, I'll join 5 naira. Nobody taught them that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So don't joke with your tithe. Discipline yourself. I stand under God to say this consistently. I have maintained paying my tithe. Those around me knows to an extent consistently for 12 years. Consistently. While as a student, it's in date. The way I dread tithe, they made, it, made us know early in life that when you touch that, you'll be so poor. And I was running away from poverty. So the way I dread tithe is like the way a man fears God. I fear tithe. Discipline yourself. Discipline yourself. Start training. Now, one time I thought somebody asked the question. Say, I'm a student. Can I pay tight? Now, listen. At best, even if you are not supposed to pay tight as a student, you can do it as a practice still because your lifestyle. If you can do it now, then you do it later. So it's not an, an, an issue for debate or an issue for argument. Let me start it now till it becomes my life. Now I pity some of you. I pity some of you. Some of your, your children in life can grow up to become chronic debtor or robbers of God. Chronic ones. The Bible says, and Levi paid tight in Abraham's loins. What you do, you are passing to your genealogy. Now you are already training yourself. Ten years now, you've not paid tight. See what you have given to your child. So they too will grow up and begin to struggle in their pain of tights. So you better start now. Train yourself. God bears me witness. There is no money that comes to my hand. The first thing I remove out of it is his own. The first, once any money hits my hand, it's like it has entered my system. This is what you should struggle. Struggle first to master. And stop looking, jumping, collecting responsibilities. Take time to grow in God. Else when others are standing, you will fall. Hallelujah. Now, under this discipline, we talked about offerings. Give me Psalm 96 verse 8. Offerings. Now I'm scared not to take much on this. So I don't say, maybe we want to raise fund tonight. Please relax your mind. We won't raise fund. Is that okay? We won't raise fund. Give unto the Lord. That glory due unto him. Hear the word due unto him. Do unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his court. It is unscriptural to come to the church without an offering. If nobody will tell you the truth, I came tonight to tell you. And my prayer tonight is that the word will not spare you. May it pierce you where you need to be pierced. It is unscriptural to come to the church without an offering. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. 
bring him an offering and come into his court come into his court come into his court come into his court give me first Samuel 2 30 the Bible says it's his glory is his right is his honor first Samuel 2 30 the Bible says wherefore the Lord God of Israel said I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever but now now the Lord said be it far from me for they that honor me will I honor and they that despise me shall be lightly extinct they will be brought to nothing I'm teaching you the mystery of the poverty in the body of Christ the reason why so much poverty he said if you don't honor me I will make you as nothing and the Bible says you honor him by bringing an offering when you come to church what did I say it is unscriptural to come to the church without an offering the way we were trained early in life is like if you, if you come to the church without an offering you gain nothing from that meeting that's the way they sank it in us so we are trained even our parents knew when they give you that little money and say go and buy biscuit you are supposed to have secured something out of it it is scriptural now listen let me break out the light from this the pain I have is even the people of the other religion tends to know this secret compared to the people of this of, of uh, the people of God there is such a binding tie I've tried to exploit I can't a binding tie between spirit and offering such that a native doctor knows you can't summon a spirit without an offering you can't draw the attention of his spirit without an offering and the Bible says in John 4 22 God is spirit so as much as you say you are a friend of God God is spirit is a dead you can never pull the attention of a spirit without an offering there's such a binding tie such a binding tie between spirits and offerings between spirits and offerings so plan your offerings plan it if I attend for goodness sake what has killed the body of Christ is that we were not is either we are ignorant of this or we don't even take God serious now look at a young man now can be failing in issues like this and he's doing 30 days prayer and fasting he's not stupid that's gymnastic the person of Jesus will take you to heaven but his principle will bring heaven to you the scriptures the Bible says they are founded upon eternal principles the Bible says the foundation of God standard sure you must know his principles you must discover his principle. That's what the sense of what we're asking for. When they say, Lord, show us your ways. God has ways. He has ways. He has structures. He has protocols. He has systems. The kingdom we come from is the kingdom that is structures, tr structured. You must strive to know his ways to really enjoy the fullness of God. So you can't put the attention of his spirit without an offering. So it was this mindset we have. No, have you have you even mistakenly watched the Nigerian film that somebody went to a native doctor and the doctor, the native doctor invoked a spirit without an offering? Not possible. The people of this world know it. So it's like I came to church, I got nothing, nothing that day without an offering. That's the way we are trained. And it's still in me to date. I have forced myself and trained myself not to appear before his presence empty and dead. He said that's how we give him honor. That's how we bring the glory that is due to his name. The glory that is due to his name. It's not just to be given in worship. We worship you. We worship you. He said we bring him an offering. We bring him an offering. Plan your offerings. Plan your time. If I will attend a meeting, maybe two times a week, in a month, that will be roughly how many times? Eight times. And I choose to be giving 100, 100 naira per meeting. That's the level I want to start. Because offering is your choice. The Bible says, let every man give, give, give according as his, uh, he has proposed in his heart. Second Corinthians 9 verse 6. So that's 800, right? At the beginning of the month, 
I find an envelope and put 100 naira it there. Nothing pushes me to it. That's why I said it is what a discipline. But you don't have, you don't plan it because it doesn't matter to you. So you just woke up, you finish the whole money in your hand. You know, ah, there's nothing to do. Say, I don't want to come to church, I don't have offering. You are in discipline. God will never be emotional about your situation. We should know that it's not the cry we cry that most of the time move God. It's the revelation of Him. So you can't be emotional with your situation because you are in discipline. Plan it. Okay, I want to grow to 200 naira. Eight meetings, that's how much? 1006. I put 200 naira, eight in an envelope and keep. Anytime I'm going to church, will I struggle? It is the glory that is due to His name. I just pick one out of it. Church. If you don't make God your priority, He will not make you His priority. If He's not first on your list, you will not be first on His list. It's not just seeking the kingdom, it is seeking it what? First. That matters. So, kingdom matters is what we are discussing tonight. You must train yourself plan your offerings monthly now the bible tells us of a story the bible says one time jesus came to the temple do you know jesus in his old teachings spoke much on money than on anything in the bible go and trace it jesus taught more and commented more on money than on anything in the scriptures one time the bible says it they were in a church like this and he came and sat down close to the offerings. That means an offering session is not in choir administration when the man of God wants to preach that matters to you. Offering session matters to God. He said, and he sat down and he was watching the way they were dropping the offerings and watching what they were giving. Why? God knows why it is difficult for a man to give his finances is that he got it with his sweat. So it is made, most of the times very difficult for a man to release it. He can give you anything. Ah, he can give you time. He can come and sit there in the meeting. Just stay. Let's worship God. Worship Him. We see a man's money. That's where God touches a man. <laughs> so the Bible says he sat down close to the offering. I was watching as they gave. And suddenly, he saw a poor widow. Came with two mites. The Bible says she walked. She walked and gave that two mites. Now listen. Jesus said caught the attention of his disciples he said this poor widow gave all she had she went home justified that's not my emphasis i thought he knew she was poor she was a widow he would have returned the money back to her he did not because he has seen a woman that are, that is walking away out of poverty by touching a principle in god so i'm not shocked sometimes but we'll get to there we'll get there we're there he saw a woman that was walking away out of poverty. Now, if I do that in the church now, you say, sir, you are wicked. Now, he knew she was poor. He knew she was what? A widow. Yet he said, ah, you have sense, you have sense. Forgiving. Now, the Bible says, when you want to give your offerings in the church, and you find out that you have a problem with your brother, he didn't say you should carry it away. He said, drop it there. <laughs> I want to tell you how much offerings matter to God. He said, drop your offering first and the other. Because you can claim that you want to go and settle the issue now. You don't come back again. <laughs> he said, drop your offering first, then go and settle it with your brother. Then from where you are settling, don't worry to be acceptable. <laughs> offerings matter to God. So how do you want to get much from him if you can't even pull his attention? Now the next thing we talked about are seeds. Our seeds, the principle of giving. They are seeds. <sighs> Try not to talk much. Give me Second Corinthians nine ten. Give me Second Corinthians nine ten. When we do the part two of the word convention, I'll speak more on some of all these things. Now listen. There is a mystery in God unveiled in Genesis 8 22 the Bible says as long as the earth remain 
sit down and others shall not see it. It's a mystery in God. I don't want to play with that scripture over all through this night. It will take me days to finish that. Sit time and harvest shall not cease. It's a mystery. See, Holy Ghost. Jesus. Okay. Give me Deuteronomy 18. Let's just touch it a little bit. Jesus. Please be fast. Deuteronomy 8.18. Now, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thee, thy fathers as this day. Listen, he told them he was the one that gave them the power to get wealth. Many people have said this power is idea. They didn't say so. They never said so. Now, if they didn't question him, it means he had revealed this somewhere before. It's our job to go and find it from the beginnings what he has said, what that power was. It means they knew what this power was. Give me Genesis 8. The Bible says, so as to establish the covenant. There was a time a covenant was made. There was a time a covenant was made. Give me verse 20 or 18. Give me 18. There's a story after Noah came out from the world. Ark. Now and Noah went forth and his son and his wife and his son wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing and every fowl and whatsoever creeped upon the earth after their kind went forth out of the ark. Next verse. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. This is the first time a man will offer offerings in scriptures. Go ahead. Next verse please. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. That's why I said there is a binding tie between spirits and offering I can't unravel. I, I don't understand how so much offerings move spirits. I don't know. And the Lord said in his heart, now this is the covenant, the first covenant made in scripture. I will not again curse the ground. That's why I tell people the ground is no longer cursed. A man reversed it by an offering. A man reversed that curse from the beginning by an offering. He didn't need to wait for Jesus to come. He said, I will no longer again curse the ground. So it is unscriptural to say, man must sweat because the ground was cursed. You don't know your Bible. But an offering, a man reversed that curse from the beginning. For the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every thing living. As I have done. This is the first covenant. Next verse. Now, why death remaineth? This is the power. This is the principle God gave to Noah. This is the key. The key to sustenance in life. Why the earth remaineth? Seed time and harvest shall not cease. Now, listen, is the earth still remaining? So, as long as this earth remains. Because if the earth will be dissolved, will I be here? So, I can maintain this principle as long as the earth remains. Seed time. Give me Psalm 126. When, when David caught this light, you know what he called it? Precious seeds. He said, a man goeth bearing precious seeds in his hands. He said, a man beareth precious seeds. The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Next verse. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the hidden. Now watch. It was the hidden trying to find out how did God turn the, again their captivity? How did he bring them out of that bondage? And they were breaking a mystery. I'll show you something now. The Lord had done great things for them. Go ahead. The Lord had done great things for us. We are off. We are glad. Next verse. Turn again our captivity. They were reminding God the way he delivered them before. As the streams in the south. Next verse. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy next verse he that goeth weeping bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing bringing his sheaves with him they knew the power to which they got that wealth the seed power next verse i'll show you something now watch now some of you would think these scriptures is different 
from the one we just read is a continuation i told you the essence of this dividing scriptures into verses and chapters is just for coordination and organization doesn't mean that's how they occurred for instance the whole of this place is maraba bukwe right then we begin to have different streets but that we divided them into streets does it change it that everywhere is maraba bukwe so i can tell you just go to social street you know where it is please do you understand now this is a continuation of that verse they've not finished they were still saying except the lord built the house they labor in vain they were playing with this principle and telling our generation that no it except god decides to build a house they labor in vain in one of my book i call that chapter the labor of a fool is a man struggling without applying the principles of god is the labor of a fool the labor of a fool that's why i beg you please get the academic series a man didn't read and he came to meet a priest to collect a blessing you will so fail why he said your job is to plant and water my job is to give increase there is no seed on the ground what am i increasing so when you don't plant anything and wheat grow when i pray on more weeds you, your failure will be gra gravity with, with with intensity and then you now back and say the man is not anointed you are not my thermometer except the lord build the house the labor in vain now build it except the lord keep the city the watchman walk it but in vain next verse can you see that principle again it is vain for you to rise up they were talking about the seed power it is vain for you to rise up early to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrow so he give it his beloved sleep the seed power the seed power is the principle god unravel that with a seed in your heart you can bring forth any harvest you so desire with a seed in your heart with a seed we have diverse kinds of seed we have financial seeds we have seeds of honor you can lay honor on a man and reap and harvest we have goodwill seeds we have financial seeds i thought on the 30 the, the 70 and the 100 foot principle of scriptures how to repeat we have diverse kinds of seed now finally let me tell you the principle i learned over time in god second corinthians 9 verse 6 just give me verse 10 let me go straight to my scriptures now i learned this very late i wished i knew it some years before i, I like what papa Oedipo said he said i became wealthy the first day the light hits me that's why i was shouting i can't be poor see christianity is not confession with stupidity what is confession it's not positive talking confession is saying i have applied the principle that will bring about that result that's why i'm declaring my address before time the bible says, without faith it is impossible to please god how much faith without work is dead. so when we are confessing i can't be poor don't follow me and say it if you have not touched what i've touched if you are not doing what i'm doing you'll be very very So confession in the Christian faith is that I have discovered, discovered a secret in God. And because I am applying that secret, I can predict my harvest. <laughs> that's, that's why most people, I just see some foolishness in the body of Christ. He just think it's to pick a scripture and begin to jump. No, no. There are principles in God. Now this is the principle I learned, though very, very late. Verse 10. Verse 10. Now he that ministered seed to the sower, but minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. Anything that comes into the hand of a Christian contained in it the seed and the bread, you must testify it. If you eat everything that comes to your hands, you are a foolish Christian. Including airtime. They send me airtime. I look at it. So, okay, I need to remove a seed. Now, have you seen a farmer that go, went to the farm to plant and made an harvest of the farm and eat everything? No, one thing he does, he reserves what he will use for the what next and he reserves the best. So he will get what? Better harvest. It's a principle we are everybody's applying every day. But when it comes to church, we don't know it. So I can get any harvest I want. Sometimes when I need money. And I check, maybe I need 100,000. And I have just 10. I pick that 10. 
I say, Lord, I am sowing this seed. Because when you want to sow financial seed, speak to it. Alright? You must name your seed and give it a name. Lord, I am sowing this seed because I need 100,000. Thank you. Sincerely, most of the times, I get them. Alright? Now, some of you might begin to practice this thing. and don't, See, the first time I trained myself to start to give, I was so broke, very poor, it was not working. Jesus. But we held on to that scripture. If it is his word, it won't fall to the ground. So God, we talk, talk, check your heart. For adventure, you want to do cha cha with him. 50 chop, 100. <laughs> 100 chop, 200. No, no. God is not a money doubler. <laughs> He's a God. So he begins to check your heart. And when you hit it with him, you'll be shocked. It begins to work for you. So put it to work. Begin to start now. Practice it. The seed principle. So with a seed in your hand, you can get any harvest you so desire. This was the first thing we had taught early in life. Number six, the discipline of kingdom responsibility. I'm trying to work on this time. So let me just use just one one scriptures. The discipline of kingdom responsibility. Give me Luke 15 verse 11. Luke 15 verse 11. Let me just use that scripture alone. Luke 15 11. Look up the discipline of kingdom responsibility. This one discipline you must learn, you must master to get stability and to grow in God. The Bible says, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided it unto them his living. One time, one of my sons asked me, Sir, was it wrong for the guy to have asked for his inheritance? Sincerely speaking, that was the first time I saw that kind of question in that light. I now looked at the thing very well again. I said, but wait. If it is not wrong, the father will have told him. Why are you asking? And I saw another light. He said he gave it to the two of them. <laughs> Did you see what I saw? He divided them. He's leaving them, not the, the person that asked. So it wasn't wrong for the guy to have asked for his rights. He was entitled to it. But he had a problem. He had a problem. And the other brother came. When he returned back and after made a spoil of all he got. He came back. And the father decided to welcome him. And do something mighty for him. And the other brother was hungry. Why will you do this for me? And the father made a statement. He said everything I have is yours. Please, are you getting me? That means if the man has God, he has everything. Are you following? What the elder brother understood was responsibility. So what is sonship in the kingdom? The culmination of responsibility and rights. Galatians 4 verse 1 to 2. Fast, 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 fast. Galatians 4 verse 1 to 2. Now I say that the air as long as he is a child a child understands just rights that's what the younger one understood just rights he differed nothing from a servant though he be your lord of all so the elder brother just understood responsibility was a servant please are we getting blessed so you must learn kingdom responsibility that it is your duty to advance the kingdom it is your duty the first thing you are supposed to seek on the surface of the earth is god's kingdom kingdom first anything second that's what the muslim knows that's what the people of other religions knew that they are cheating us to our face i tell you a muslim man enter into a business with kingdom first that's why he can leave the business and go to pray but a Christian will tell you, let's leave business. Business is business. Christianity is Christianity. They enter with that mindset. Kingdom first. A Muslim man will enter politics with kingdom first. So if you like, cry all you, all you can cry. The employment will keep coming to the north. <laughs> I, I, I taught my sons last week on a principle they must know to survive in life. Now, 
I'll say this, but eventually this is the first time you are hearing about defending myself. I call it the principle of being biased. If you have not gotten to a point in life where you are biased, you don't know God. <sighs> Am I safe? If you have not gotten to a point where you are being biased, you don't know God. If you ever blame Buari for what he's doing, God will punish you. It's a principle in God. That's why they fight to be in, in, in position. See, they are picking that principle from the scriptures. Galatians chapter 6, the Bible says, so good, especially to the members of your own household. Show them good first. The Christian will say, no, 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 let's take religion out of this. Let's take religion. <laughs> you know, this Muslim guy is more qualified. You're a fool. There is no kingdom. You're foolish. That's why they are taking over the world with ease. With ease. So our own is shouting. Now they say it's employing everybody's employing is not on people. They will now say let all the prayer team organize. As I like music unit. <laughs> we'll sing for you people who <laughs> praying. Lord, raise that. Touch them, touch them. Why not he send the touch ones? Let them sit there and give their people to. By checking the tribe, your security is much more. I will know who is their chief security officer. By checking the nature of admission in a semester, I will know who is the DC. Which tribe he came from. It's the law. <laughs> Let's leave that. That's not our topic. We'll teach about that when I'm taking the FYB. On 30 vital principles of life I've learned. So the discipline of kingdom responsibility. You must be all. Give your all for the kingdom. Your time, your resources, your intellect must first go for the kingdom before anything else. If you give more priority to your job than the kingdom, you don't hold weight in God's sight. I have seen people that will come so late to meeting. Look at the way we struggle. Every day the person in charge of the boss say, encourage people to come early. But they will give somebody a sales girl job of 5,000. She's running. My guy says, I should come see 30. See 30. Why? Because when you come to Grace Realm, I don't give you salary. I don't give you money. But you don't know what I give to you. Because we are not taught. So never give any attention. Never give any priority. Never pour much of your resources to anything. That is much more than you do for the kingdom. When I check your budget every day, I will know whether you have a heart for God. The Bible says where the heart of a man is, yes, treasure will be. When I check your spending, throughout today now, you bought the charge card. The message you sent was your girlfriend. You didn't even tell her Jesus is Lord. You say you missed her. And that thing you said was a mistake and you were very serious saying it. That you couldn't sleep and you were snoring, shaking the whole step building. So when I check, I check your affairs every day. Do you know a Muslim man put the marks in his wheel? Go and trace the wheels of Christian. We are not taught. It paid me so much. How a white man will even wheel property to a dog? And a Christian man, no. His son, he give all his children. He doesn't know the best you can live with any child is spirituality, not money. Money can finish, but spirituality will always bring money to him. Please, are we getting blessed? I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, give your all for God's kingdom. Anything you do that has to do with God's kingdom, that has to do with the promoting and the propagation of God's kingdom, take your eyes off a man. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 and verse 7, it says, Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Do it as unto the Lord. He taught us this principle early in the scriptures. So, but eventually, you are here right now. You now feel you are helping me. You don't know the way you are seeing the vision work. That's how I'm seeing it too. I think the vision is bigger than a man. That's why you might end up thinking you are fighting the man. You are fighting God. A wise man called Gamaniel knew that early in scriptures one time they say let's stone the apostles let's kill them he said wait 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 they don't do things like that it's not a kingdom principle he said leave this man leave them you don't know you are not too sure you can be fighting god don't know and think you are frustrating a man 
And so you find that you talk in 30 years of your life. Some of you get, get out of this place, you can't get a job. You get out of this place, you are struggling to marry. You marry no children. You don't know it was the things you did. Get my message on Amplified Realm. The things you did years back. When you were crying, you God, oh God, give me admission. If you give me, I'll be sleeping in church. He has given you, he has played his own part. And you felt you were smart. Finish and come and get the job. He will wait for you. At the point you need him much. Be all for the kingdom. Give your all for the kingdom. Never regret doing anything that has to do with the propagation of God's kingdom. I told you early in life that I learned this. I was going one time passing through a mountain of fire church. Saw the sandboard down. They didn't send me. The church was not opened. I settled down, big stick, dug the hole, kept the sandboard, covered it up. And said, It's an insult for me to pass a church and see this and leave it the way I came. Because by the function of that church, the paraventure one man will be saved from hell. They taught us this very early in life. Kingdom. We must stick kingdom. Kingdom comes before denomination. It comes first. Denomination only gives us what? An identity. But we are pursuing one cause. One cause. Sometimes I want this is the thing that, that, that killed the body of Christ right now. So much. You see, a pastor is praying for another pastor's church to fail. You are a fool. You are praying for it to fail. And yet Jesus keeps shouting every day, the laborers are few. And you, you are driving the few laborers that are there. What kind of Bible did you know? Who trained you up in life? What did they teach you? What comes first is kingdom before denomination and so the muslims know it if they want to fight between the kingdom first you know they have sect among them yes. kingdom first they will gather together and finish you and frustrate the hell out of you for you see christians sometimes i wonder whether it is the same heaven paul died for like that that all of us are planning to get to with the mindset we carried a man that will open a church and keep another person there and leave it is going to open another one. Die. Kingdom first. Be a radical giver for the kingdom. Be a radical promoter of God's kingdom. Anything, once you know it, will lift up the kingdom. Put your all into it. Just always tell yourself, kingdom. 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 Take denomination of you. Take it. It only gives us what? An identity. So like today you are coming to meeting. They know you are coming to grace train. That's the only function of denomination. We are still performing the same purpose. Now when you check, excuse me, when you check just around there, you see more than at least 30 mocks. You know they have bigger mocks. Why are they building much more? More than 30. There's one, there's about three in this direction right now. There's some here again. About two or three too. You see one very close to the mirror there. Big! Yet when you go to the front of the suya joint, you see they've laid one now. Then you go to the other end, you see another one they've laid again. I took some of my children, I said, come, let's go to the new hostel. I'll share this as a light. I said, let's go to the new hostel. Let me teach you how people think kingdom. Last week I was reading on the net, and the can, can, northern can Christians were complaining that all the appointments, you know, the south was first complaining that the appointment has been for the north. Then the Christians in the north now check it very well. There's even northern Muslims, not northern Christians inside. <laughs> I see people don't understand anything yet. Paul said, If only you are listening to me. A time is coming, it might be difficult, difficult to practice your faith. See the way they can confidently stand up and go and report and say, You people are disturbing us with your prayers. Confidently. Please give your all for the kingdom. What did I say? Kingdom first than anything. Run away from people. Takes your attention from the kingdom. Run away from them. Any man that brings denomination, I stand under God to say this. My children know me. You cannot kill another man of God in my presence. I will leave you alone. You can't. Have I preached about anybody in this pulpit? I will never do it. I can't stay two hours with God. And that's the message I got from the throne of grace. To come and preach somebody else. With the, as big as this Bible is. God le left all the names here. So I should go and cause. You are a fool. 
You don't know who sent you. You don't know who sent you. Please, let's take the kingdom and stop fighting ourselves. We are going nowhere with this. We are going nowhere with this. We are going nowhere with this. Hallelujah. Number what are we? There's a part I want to stay much on. Number what? Number seven. The discipline of sticking to the due order. First Corinthians 14 40. The discipline of sticking to the due order. Now I told us the kingdom we come from is a kingdom that is structured, is a kingdom that is built upon established protocols and systems. That's the first thing you must understand in God. Is a God of order. There is what is called in, in scriptures that due process. The Bible says, but everything must be done decently. Must, must, must. The word must signifies there is no option. It must be done what? Decently and in order. It must be done decently and in order. One discipline you must attach to your life is the discipline to understand the orders of God. The due process of God. The legalities and the technicalities of scriptures. What are you permitted by scriptures to do? What is it scripture does not give you a right over? If you don't know this, I'll share a light here right now. You now see why some of our parents are very poor. One time one of my sons came to me. Crying, crying, hard. Sister, help me. Family issue, poverty everywhere. I took the pick because I don't joke with my children. Went on 40 days fast for a child. And I wasted my fasting. No pain. That's why the first thing you do before you fast is to hear God. <laughs> what did I say? You hear God. That's the first thing. As you will labor like a fool. In Ecclesiastes 5 verse 1, he caused the sacrifice of fools. So men can they can give foolish sacrifice to God. And there was no change to that situation. See, I have learned so many things in my little work with God. How there are people's situation, I just look at them. I look at him and God show me something. My heart bless you. You know there will be nothing you can do about that person's life. How can I change the situation of a man that spoke about against him? How? It's not foolishness to be deceiving him to pray. It's foolishness. How can I transfer grace for you? I say carry the grace of my life when I can't see your labor in the work God gave me. You can't, you are not qualified for a take when you don't have a stake. You are not qualified. He said, he that received the prophet in the name of the prophet shall receive his reward. I will only deceive you. I will deceive you. It doesn't work. There is two process in scriptures. You must understand. As you study, begin to find out for the legalities and the technicalities of scriptures. What is the modus, modus operandi of God's kingdom? What are the legal parts? What are the legal parts on which I must stand? Let's check out a few. Give me. Give me. Give me. First Timothy 2 and verse 1 to 4. First Timothy 2 and verse 1 to 4. Yes. First of all, then I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. Next verse. For kings and all those who are in authority. So that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Now one thing the scripture didn't permit you to do is to speak against anyone in authority over you. Your only job is to pray. This is the legality of the scripture. Any man you ever speak against, you can never attain his height in God. And you can never attain his height in life. I'll pick some of them for us. Let's see them. The only job you, you are given is to pray for those in what authority over you you are not qualified you are not given that right by scriptures to correct a father you know the pain i have many of us don't read nice books i like us to read if i tell you the nature of books i read it will shock you i read titus and treat an elder like your father and a younger one like your wood do you know the legality of the scripture We just do you are not permitted you are killing your future go and check our fathers 
that are very poor they talk about men of god anyhow and that's why wealth is for them the people of the other faith they don't joke with their priest they understand a, a scripture a principle in god in second chronicles 20 20 the bible says, believe god you shall be established but prosperity is in the hands of his prophet if you talk about muhammad you will die this night they will kill you they will kill you but paraventure now maybe some of them come to attack me right now just then you know stand is anointed should defend himself oh. Peter knew that scripture. He drew out his sword. Do an apostle. He drew out his sword to defend his priest because he knows the prosperity of the people lies in the mouth of the priest. That's why God told them, Is there any time they come before my presence? Oh, you priest, bless the people this way. The Lord bless you. The Lord lift up the light of his cup upon you. The Lord makes you prosperous. If you talk against any prophet in Islam, you will be dead. But the church, we finish men of God and defend it with scriptures. You are not qualified. You are not qualified. You are not. If your father does that, tell him to stop. Now, the story I started the other, other time, as I finished the prayer and fasting, nothing changed in his life. I prayed and fast, and as usual, I will encourage you. I say, keep trusting God. That's the last one we still get to soon. And the young man deserted me. <laughs> I went and referred her. He now went to other people, just jump. You know how young people behave? They test your anointing. It's not strong, it's not strong. They leave it. <laughs> there is a man on whose mouth your life is. Not everybody. That's why Peter says, so to whom shall we run? You hold the words that will give us eternal life. You must not to locate people like that for yourself. There is an order that is meant to bless you and to lift you up. I know it's too. That there's an oil that is meant to bless me. Yes. I can pray all I can, fast all I can, I can I might still not touch words. Because there is a voice that is supposed to speak to my life. The same way I am a voice speaking to the lives of others. But God did it that way so there will be no I am all there is in this faith. Please are we getting blessed? The due order. The due order. Give me first chronicles. First Chronicles, or leave that. Give me First Timothy, five verse one. Very quickly, First Timothy five one. First Timothy five one. Do not rebook an older man. This is a legality. This is a due process in God. Do not rebook what an older man. You are not qualified to do so. How to kill poverty tonight in the body? Do not rebook an older man but exalt him as what a father as a father give me verse 19 <sighs> what kind of version are you giving me i'm seeing this i should know what i'm teaching from please give me king james king james thank you good against an elder receive not what an accusation so I see the things you are supposed to know inside the Bible. You don't know. You are knowing cherubim, cherubim, cherubim. The, the, the constellations of the moon and the sun. The things you are supposed to know. You didn't know. Say again, an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Is a legality in scriptures. How many of us follow this? And you want to punish disobedience when your own obedience is not complete. That's why we don't have power with God. You stick, speak against him and say, Come out! Still look at you. Are you okay? <laughs> Let's check just a few of them. Give me Matthew 18, verse 15 to 17. I just want to correct us of so many things. So I will get blessed. These are the disciplines you must begin to learn. As you open the Bible, begin to check the legalities and the technicalities of God's word. Discipline yourself to abide by them. What does scripture permit you to do? What does scripture doesn't permit you to do? Because if you go outside the covenant, it will fight you. The Bible says, with God, there is no respect of what person. It's not a sign saying God doesn't have favor right. He does. Jesus called John, the one I loved. What he was saying is, whether you, I love you or not, when it comes to my word, it is final. My foundation is sealed. I won't change it for any man. Moreover, 
are blood, burden. Now, you see, one time I had an issue and I had so many things. So many things. And a very heavily spiritual brother just went to pa 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 pa. And as usual, those they know me very well. I like to laugh. I have seen how so many people suffer in life. Alright? Time is the only revealer of truth. I am giving you time. See, I don't care how far you go in life, but this world can fight you. Lot one time forgot that the grace he was enjoying came from Abraham. He said, okay, I want to go. He left Abraham for 20 years. What did he leave so done with? Nothing. It doesn't matter how long. Said, I'm, I'm still successful. After. I'm still doing it. I'm still continue. I encourage you by the message of God. Continue. I will tell you your end. You know the same way Ecclesiastes like say, Come, let me show you the end of a fool. <laughs> That's what I'm showing you tonight. Leave him. You at first class. Continue. You see, when you buy a meat for Christmas or a fowl, won't you give it food? So it will be very big. When it's big, when it gets to Christmas, won't you kill it? He will give you first class. Carry it. Continue. Don't worry. You don't know the devil's Christmas day for you. <laughs> Continue. You no, know, sometimes we deceive ourselves. So I'm still saying moves. I'm still saying, Continue. I am alive. I won't die soon. We'll watch your end. Now, when he came, and they later called me to the, to the issue, I just laughed. Now, the person was my friend. I didn't even talk to the younger ones, because they will not understand some legalities of scriptures. Alright? So I called him. I said, brother, what you did to me is bad. This is what the Bible said, the heart of men is desperately wicked. Even if you heard of my downfall, wouldn't you have come to tell me faster, before your lights to go out? Even normal proverbs say we should not wash our dirty linings outside. I said, my brother, you have trained these younger ones to feel this is the way Christianity is done. You have broken a legality of scriptures. I will show you the law. If I, you come to me right now and tell me you have a problem with, what's your name? Joshua. You have a problem with Joshua. The first thing I will ask you is, have you told Joshua? Not I'll tell you. Okay, what did he really do? Okay, you see, Joshua is, I am a fool to do that. The Bible says, moreover, my brother. See, this is legal. <laughs> it's not the same verse you know before. Yes, we'll see it together. That's why I say, when you study the scripture like we did in last series, study for facts. Try to know the ways of God. That's what Moses was praying for. Show me your ways. Show me how this kingdom is structured. Show me the protocols of the kingdom. The due process of things. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, Go and tell him his what? Fault. That's your first point. Between thee and him alone. I'm trying to show you how much emphasis the Bible placed on it. Between thee and him alone. That's why I, I just look at him and I say, no, 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 no. This is not Christianity. And I have made up my mind, even at my death point, I will stand for the truth. You hate me, you don't like me. I will tell you the truth to your face. That this is not the way man, a man encounters God. If you continue like this, you can enter heaven. The Bible says, backbiters, warmongers, there's no room for them there. I would rather save you from hell and make you hate me now than to make you like me and do. Now I want you to be happy with me and cheat you in the legalities of God's word. Next verse. But if you will not hear thee, then take what with thee, one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be what established. Now, how many of us have followed this due process in scriptures before? Can you see how so much we have failed? Then when we start singing, I love you now, I love you tomorrow, I love you forever. I see people crying. Crying. I saw our worship is holding no weight before God. The legalities of scriptures let's see a few one and um, secondly now we talked about i'm just giving us a few from scriptures i've talked about you don't speak to anyone over you is that okay you are not qualified to do that or even correct you're stupid to do it then secondly we talked about when you have issues with people what was the first thing you're supposed to do talk to the person first then you carry another you backbite you have broken the covenant even if the person was at fault you have offended god are we following now, the third thing I want us to know about this again is you don't break the due process. Are we following? 
don't perform the duty of another in the realm of the spirit this kingdom is structured that way that was why sometimes i tell you i've tried to find out was it that the archangel gabriel could not escape into the atmosphere why must he look for another to come and rescue him now i've told us that's because in every city there is a portal in and out of that city so what that man was mantling was a gate in the spirit all right not an atmosphere not a cloud was a spiritual gate as powerful as it was the bible says when he came to give daniel the message daniel fell as dead by just talking to daniel daniel fell down dead that's to show you how mighty he was but he still couldn't perform the duty of another see your zeal <laughs> your zeal can put you into trouble that's why even Paul talked about the Galatians. He said, you have a zeal that is not according to knowledge. Then you know what he said? He said, who bewitched you? When you see a man walking with zeal without knowledge, that man is bewitched. That's why most of the time you tell them, don't do this. They won't hear you. They won't. They are still seeing God. <laughs> they are still quoting scriptures. They won't hear you. That man is bewitched already. You can't help such a person. It takes grace. You need a deliverance upon that person. You first break the bewitchment. Then you can now see that he has zeal. That is not according to knowledge. You don't perform the office of another. You know where you stand, where your right is. Very quickly, let's look at some few people in scriptures as we go to the last point. The last point we'll do is standing. So I'll not take much of our time again. Hebrews 5 verse 8. I'll leave that. Give me Acts um First Chronicles 15 13. First Chronicles 15 13. First Chronicles 15 13. Now listen. This was after Moses and David attempted to go and bring the ark. The Bible says when he tried to do that the first time, God was killing people at different points. Why? He didn't follow the due order. Hear what the scripture is saying. He said for because this is the second time right now. He had to go call for the Levite. Why? The instruction is that the ark must be born upon the shoulders of all the Le 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 Levitical priests. I said, God, we know this was a man. God says, a man after his heart, he won't bend it for you. He's no respecter of persons when it comes to his word. So the next time they wanted to bring it, he had to go and beat, meet the Levite. He said, for well, because he did not, you did it. Give me the, and verse 12. Let's see. Holy Ghost. And said unto them, Ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Did you see that? Sanctify yourself, both ye and your brethren, that you may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it. Next verse. For because you did it not after the first, the Lord our God make a breach upon us. If you break his covenant, God will break you. For that we sought him not after what? The due order. Did you see that? We sought him not after the due order. So sorting him is not a problem. You must do it what after that due order. That's why so many of us long after God and it seems like the more we get close to him, the father he becomes. 30 years, you look at your Christian work, you are amounting to nothing. So because of the pain and the pressures on you, because of the frustration, then you now look at people like us. Say, it's not by what they are doing, it's not by what they are doing. What are you doing? That is by it. What are you doing? I told you most of the time when a man talks like that, it's out of frustration. He has tried to try it and try it and try it. The thing did not work. He said now people will begin to fall after a count of six season number 13. Nobody has shook. He just came. He says no bite. You don't the word is the greatest impactation. Let me leave that for another day. <laughs> the Bible says, and Jesus said to them, Go and preach the word. Matthew 10 10 preach that the kingdom of God is at hand and what, what, what should you do next heal the sick, cleanse the leper rest the dead which bible are you reading are you using a Quranic bible follow him you have to push after God after what the due order yes, you won't see the God you are looking for you will get something else on the way give me Second King, Second Samuel 13, verse 7 to 14. Very fast. Second Samuel 13, verse 7 to 14. Now, this was the story. One time, Sam King, um, Samuel prophet, Samuel told King Saul, He said, Go to Ramah and wait for me with the children of Israel. So I will offer the due sacrifice to God. Now, it is only permitted by priests to offer sacrifices in the Old Testament. And so, give me 
Okay. And David, and David sent home to Thomas saying, What scripture are you giving me? Good. And some of the Hebrews went up. Next verse, next verse, next verse, next verse. Next verse. Next verse. And Saul said, Oh, go back. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offering. And he offered, Go to the Go to the people's verse. Let's start from there. Next verse. M. Um, seven. Give me verse seven. And some of the Hebrews went over to Jordan to the land of God and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. Next verse. And he tarried seven days according to the set time that somewhere had appointed. He was given an instruction. Wait for me seven days. Then I will come and perform the sacrifice. But Samuel came not to Giga. And the people were scattered from him. See, even the pressures or the applause of men should not make you go against scriptures. I beg you. Like the apostles, we say, why please men and disobey God? Why? When me and you are, that I'm trying to please, we all stand together before him. Why will, I, why will you be my priority? Why? Why? And so I said, bring hither what an arrow. It's not your job. You are not a priest. He said, but the people were scattering. He was looking for favor. He wanted them to like him. He said, bring me. He died a burnt offering to me. And peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. Next verse. And it came to pass. This is my pain. You see, even me, I was blaming Samuel. Why did you delay? Why? The Bible says, and it came to pass, as soon as he made an end of the bond, bond offering. You know the verse that, ter that terrifies me much? The word, behold. <laughs> so it was looking as if someone was just at the corner. <laughs> Watching a man that will follow God. He said, behold, someone came and someone went out to meet him that he might salute him. Next verse. And someone said, what hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw the people were scattered from me, I want to make them like me. I want people to be pleased with me. That the people were scattered from me and that thou camest not within the days appointed. And that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Miksha. Next verse. There, therefore I said I, the Philistines will come down upon me to Giga and I have not made supplication. Are you seeing all these quoting scriptures? He's telling you how important what he did was. I forced myself therefore and offered. <laughs> he said he forced himself and offered a bond of it. And Samuel said unto Saul, Thou hast done what? Foolishly. Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thee, thy kingdom forever. I told you, some of you have already truncated years of your life already. Yes, you have truncated it. You, you have done that. By one stupid thing you choose to do. Foolish thing. That's why sometimes I used to tell people, why are you being, why are you being like this? So people can be foolish. You know that this thing you are doing is against scripture. It's thing you know where you are doing it is irrespective. Why? Why do you want to take a long time to get God? Why? Why? So many of us weary ourselves. Why? Why not follow his process and encounter him? Why? Give me Give me first um, second chronicles 26 verse 16 very fast second chronicles 26 16 to 20 now this is talking about king uzziah the bible says, but when he was strong his heart was lifted to his destruction for he transgressed against the lord his god and went into the temple of the lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense now, the most time you can miss God is when you amount to positions. You begin to behave abnormal. I've seen many of them. I should tell you, I don't know that something used to do people. <laughs> when they are just given position, they become abnormal. You see, normal, normal woman being before. Normal person. But they, they become strange. It's, you know, the higher you get in God, there are demons attached to what? Positions. That's what you don't know. That's why I used to encourage young believers to sit down. 
they force you to carry it, but they will force you to defend the seat. Now, you just near yeah, a lady, see my you don't talk, look, look, look. who sent you to go and carry it? <laughs> and they will not tell you in the body of Christ. We know what we are facing. And as I read, the priest went in after him. This is a prophet telling him, Don't do what you are doing. And with him, four score priests, 80 priests, 80. You know what they say? That the gods want to kill, they first make wrong mad. You tell the person, This thing you are doing is not wrong. I have seen, I don't know why it's always like that. They will do it. Continue. I don't, as if there's a scriptural verse they used to encourage themselves. I know the mindset they have, they'll go and ask for mercy afterwards. See, mercy forgives you but does not approve seeds. And your daily routine is a seed you are sowing. It must grow. Mercy does not what uproot the seed from the ground. It only forgives you of your iniquity. Because irrespective of the seed you have sown, God will have still punished you extra. So you will say, Lord, I'm sorry, he forgives you. But you see that seed. <laughs> they will do you back. David slept with a man's wife. His son slept with his daughter. They will do you back. Did God not forgive him? He said, I'm forgiving you. I'm forgiving you, David. You must understand the principle of mercy in scriptures. There is the principle I taught some of my people. The three principles of mercy in scripture. It's, you don't just get mercy. That's why you see sometimes two of you can do the same thing. God will kill this one and leave this one. There's the principle of mercy. You don't know it. You just think it's not Lord. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You are foolish. And as I heard the priest, along with 80 brave priests of the Lord, 80 brave. That means these ones they were they were taking weight. This to gym. That was the caliber of people that had to come and stop him and say, Ah, what do you want to do? Next verse. And they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him, It appertained not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priest, the sons of Aaron, that are concentrated for that purpose. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord. Next verse. Then Uzziah was wrought. And that's the major problem of people when you correct them and tell them, This thing you are doing, this is not Christianity. This is not the symptom to greatness. They pick offense instead of them to change. I told you most of the times when you manifest this kind of attitude, a father corrects you and you still do it afterwards. The devil wants to kill. He said he picked offense. Do you know, see, it doesn't matter how good it is. One time, the sons of Aaron offered a sacrifice to God. God killed the two of them. He said, it's a what? A strange fire. So don't say, I'm still serving God. It's the service. <laughs> See, there is a due process. I don't care what you are doing. Be a prophet. There's a prophet. There are due processes in scriptures. He said, and was enraged. But when he became enraged with the priest in the presence of the priest in the lost temple, beside the altar of the incense, a skin disease broke on his forehead. And in Israel, once you become a king and you are leprous, you are not qualified to sit on the throne again. Finally, on this lesson, let's do one more. Um, number eight. Leave that. Number eight. The discipline of holding God to God no matter what. That's one discipline we learned early in life. That's one discipline you must attach to your life. The discipline of holding on to God no matter what. We were taught early that it will not be rosy all the way. There are times when we will place so much expectation on God. But things might not go the way we expect. We have to hold on to God. No matter what. Hold on to Him. You must practice it. You must put it to work. Give me Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. Learn to embrace all the seasons of your life. When it's good, hold on to God. When the way seems not to be pleased, and hold on to God, no matter what. Acts chapter 14, verse 20. Give me 20. <sighs> Holy Ghost. This is talking about the Apostle Paul. After this, the, okay. Out beat, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day departed with Barnabas to Debbie, 21. And when they had preached the gospel city, and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra, and to Inconium and Antioch. Next verse, that's my emphasis. Confirming the souls of the disciples, 
and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must too much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God nobody teach us this again we must too much we must too much tribulation do what enter into the kingdom of God so you see a young believer just one card over he said I won't come to church again nobody told him that you were supposed to hold on to God no matter what we held on to him it wasn't rosy all the way we've been we've received the heat and blows of life we've seen things that comes to question our faith in God but we hold on to him no matter what he said it is necessary I, you know, I enjoy this version now I'm enjoying this. Is that okay? I don't even I don't know the full meaning of your version. The, the invited column that was brought today. It is necessary to pass through many troubles on our way into the kingdom. The baptism of fire. He will put you through them. Why? To work out obedience, to work out kingdom nature in you. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8. It says Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. You don't learn obedience from scriptures. <laughs> He learned it through the things he suffered. He learned obedience. So what is it that is happening to you? That you say you want to give up, to give up on God. The discipline of holding on to God no matter what. The discipline of holding on to God. And like Job, you keep telling yourself, Job 14, 14, I will wait for the days of my appointed time in my change come yet in my mother flesh i will see god there is hope for it i know my redeemer be that that's what we want to hear christians say in the face of situations in the face of trying moments i know my redeemer give me mark for mark 10 give me mark 10 chapter 29 to 30 now listen to me listen to me there are things rise up your feet there are things or just sit down so i can write there are things you will never have an answer to in this life i'm telling you what many will not tell you many will not tell you even me there are things that has happened in life to me i can't explain this why it's it is. there are things you will never if you attempt to answer every give answer to everything you enter into error there are things that will happen to you, you can't explain why. You carry scripture here and here, it doesn't balance. Leave it. Even Paul, at the end of his life, having written 16 books of the Bible, he said, we know in part. We know. There are things you can't explain. You don't know why they happen. Ah, no, no, no. Have you, have, have you gotten to a point you have obeyed all the scriptures and it still backfired on you? I have seen it. You do everything and it didn't work. You come to the church and it looks like the pastor is lying. He's not telling you the truth. There are things, even me, I can't give you an answer. I can't. I can't. I can't. Mark chapter 10, verse 29. Now, Peter was so troubled one time. He said, Lord, we are following you. We are doing all these things for you. We are not seeing anything to show for it. We have become rise up to your feet. We have become object of sympathy and mockery to our generation. I have served you, served you. I attend all meetings possible. Every crusade and program possible. That family situation seems not to change. My academic seems not to improve. Are we following? That sickness seems not to leave me. Every man of God has prayed for me to the extent you are tired. You have lost faith. You are so discouraged to the point. They say, and there's one miracle night in Grace Center. You see the people that have prayed. What I know, my redeemer, oh, I know, my redeemer. Leave the scripture. Leave all of creation. Testify. And this life within me cry, I know my Redeemer lives. 
sometimes you put in all your effort you are still spilling don't worry hold on to God God doesn't come late he only shows up late to make you the latest sometimes you can't finish school some of your mate gets job five years with all your evangelism all the things you are doing no job don't worry there is a principle in God I know this God I serve can make the story of one day of a man equivalent to the 35 years of another man I know it in God and Peter asked that question he said let it not be as if we are fo following you foolishly mocking up they are mocking up say common sense you don't have see see the way you are following God now look at what your life has turned into you know sometimes when I stand to take the bike with the student I say Kai if I've taken any of these jobs right now by now you have my car and be set to marry and I think if I could accept to come and do the work immediately I just came Kai that's how I should be coming. I know it's not always like that. They don't tell us the truth. He will pass you through the baptisms of fire. No wonder he said in John 16, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. John 16, 32. He said, in this world you will have many tribulations. But just rejoice in me. Just maintain your joy. That's what I want of you. See, as long as I have overcome this world, you will laugh at last. But many of us at this point break down break down get so discouraged and miss God see this is one of the most most delicate points many of us miss God at a point where your expectations are, are dashed no wonder the Bible say hope deferred make the heart sick I understand your pain I have been there too hope deferred can truly make the heart sick and Peter say Lord And Jesus replied, I assure you, Jesus said, There is no one who has left house, brothers or sisters, mother or father, children or field, because of me and the gospel. The word assuredly means, as long as the earth and heavens remain, God is a structure that will not be broken in me. Next verse. Who will not receive what? hundred times more now at this time houses brothers and sisters mothers children and fields with this is the path when i saw i said they didn't tell me they only say come and give your life to christ right now and your grace will begin to change from f to a's so many of them met god at a point where we needed something more we didn't meet we didn't just encounter him for who he was i came to church the day i was desperate for a change in my academics and so i encountered god and then I had a good grade. Unfortunately, the next semester, my grade changed again. I said, no, 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 no. Like this was not the goal. So it was an academic God you encountered. Our Christian experience were questionable. So I was asking myself, Lord, why? In fact, the day I met God, I met God 2003. When I met God, that was when my life turned upside down. What? I didn't mean it turned upside down in the in the way you are thinking <laughs> oh we love god yes i carry jesus but when you look at my life in the fiscal you want to mock it i said somebody looked at me and said are you sure this person is not cost then we bumped into this scripture we now saw it to say hey give me matthew 5 very fast give me verse 10 we now saw it we say jesus oh 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 there is persecution they didn't tell us they just told me my grades will change and that's all I was not told. I said, I have children that have changed fathers. <laughs> they just check. The anointing is not strong. <laughs> Jesus. There is a level you get to in God that you know it is blessed to undergo persecution. It's a level you can't survive in God without being persecuted. It's like there's a height you get to in God. That's your food to which you need to survive. He said, blessed, blessed. The meaning of the word blessed means fortunate to be envied. Which are persecuted for righteousness sake. He said, there is something God will give you. The kingdom. The kingdom. What is the kingdom? Heaven and earth put together. God will give it to you. It's a level of blessedness. But most of the times we miss God at this point. The discipline of holding on to God no matter what. 
Oh, thank God for the wonderful grades I have. I only tell my children, some of you will not produce the result I produce. It's not a curse. It's because you have your own course. Me, I've finished my own. It's part of my course. But I'll still push you to want to get what I have. Is that okay? But even if I see a child of mine, have all my children produced first class? No. Are all of them doing excellently when the academics? No. There are some people I have prayed. God sees my heart. I have fasted over the issues 40 days, 40 nights. I have poured all year, applied mystery of every mystery I can know in scriptures. Every semester. It's like even if they know they'll just give them the seal. I don't know why. I've tried. I've tried to explain. See, these are things they will not tell you. There are things I've, I've, I've prayed for. No answer till date. Oh, you saw a dumb girl talk in the miracle night. Ah, forget that one. I have seen some. Even some till now, I'm still praying. It's not changing. I don't know why. But there's something I tell them. Just keep doing your best. As long as you are sure that that thing you are doing is your best. With my blessing on your life, God will bless it. That's the only kind of thought, class man, you can envy. One that did his best and is kind of the blessing of a father. But if you didn't, don't envy the other one. He had first class, he was still walking in shit. Don't try that type. Just do your best. Hang on and hold on. Put in all your best into it. And tell God, Father, see my heart. It's my best to the best of my ability I'm doing. I know you will bless it. The discipline of holding on to God, no matter what. I have prayed for issues that 13 to 20 years. No solution. I have prayed for issues. Cried blood. Oh God. So do I have all the answers? No. Like I told you, there are things you will never be able to explain in this life. You will never. If as a man of God, you try to provide solution for everything, you enter into jazz very soon. Because they will put you under pressure. You want to force the answer by force. There are people that sometimes they will come to me. They say, sir, I hear you hear God very well. You see with the eyes of Balaam. Sir, tell me what God is showing you now. I, I open it very well. I close it again. I say, I'm sorry. He's not talking. You want to put me under pressure to lie? Sir, you say, yes, truly he was a prophet. And then give me a problem with God. No. I say, he didn't talk. Oh, I don't know why. I don't know. He's not talking. I don't know. See, let me tell you how funny it is. There are some meetings I've gone. Oh, God of heaven. Jesus Christ of heaven. There was a meeting I had. I saw glory in a realm I've not seen before. There are meetings I come to. Fire! Water! Smoke! <sighs> See, everybody pray. You are checking. What is happening? See, Sela, I don't know. I don't know. We can give it all our name. That's why I tell you, when you try to give an answer to everything, you enter into error all the time. You say, hey, is this thing that happened? Is this thing that happened? And one day God told me, son, be careful. Most of the times, that's the meeting I bless the people more. That's the meeting I bless them more. Are we blessed tonight? These are the things that give the fathers of old stability. That made them grow in God. That made them grow in God. I beg you. Please hold on to God. No matter what. Hold on. Hold on to God. You know one day I was, I was reading the story of Job. Die. Die. Pray not to be an issue. His own was not coming in interval. Instantaneous. As if they, they said to them. As this one is leaving the room. The other one is coming into the room. Say yeah. In all of this. I will praise him. But you, you go and call your mate. I don't know what's happening to me. It's like the devil just opened the, the gate of hell for my family and me this day. This month, everything is Baba news, Baba news, Baba news, Baba news. And the devil is happy. Say, wow! We are making maximum impact. May the devil not be joyful on my account. I will make him bleed. Nothing is qualified to take joy off my life. Nothing is qualified. See, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Listen, what it means is this. Once God is happy, I am strong. <laughs> it is not your joy. I don't miss God. You know, we just lay rubbish out of it. It is his joy that gives me strength. As long as he's still happy. As long as I can look at his face. That's why I beg you to have a personal work with God. There are times my devotion 
my whole devotion study prayer and anything is just seeing him smile jesus it has lightened me oh god it's equivalent to 50 years of rema yes a man just saw his back part and wrote genesis exodus 11 five books god showed him the past <laughs> just him showing me his face smiling jesus you don't know what it means to me oh god oh god lift up your hands to give your life to him you want to eradicate your life please come out for those of you that this is your first time of coming to grace Realm, we don't close our eyes here to give our lives to him we love him it's something to be proud about jeremiah 9 23 if a man must boast let him boast that he knows me it's something to be proud about i know him i know jesus that should be your pride in life that you know him most of us have missed God at this point they didn't tell us that we must we must with much tribulation enter into the kingdom, we were not told so when it came, oh, we said no Jesus ah, this Jesus is difficult he's a difficult Jesus many of us, many prostitutes today, this is where they failed many armed robbers you see they say the poverty was too much, we can't cope was it true? yes like I told you, I said no I have been there all right, so I won't condemn you or condemn them. If I, if I have an opportunity, I'll bring them back to God. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Breaks the, have you gotten to a point you've seen some people, no matter the density of the encouragement, they can't be encouraged again. Kai, if you get to that point, you are finished. You are finished. Lift up your hands, everybody. Shaka mana no sopa if you want to make it right with God, please just come up. Come up, come up. You know you've missed him. Hook your hearts. Touch your faith. And you lost faith in him. We don't in nothing. If there's anyone here, please make it to the front. Come joyfully, come gladly. And receive praise from him. We hold nothing. He said, Take my body for my body is hold nothing. And my yoke is easy. My body is light. My yoke is easy, yet he called it body. Yet he called it health. Everything I give. Everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have just been a place, surrender your heart to Him. Take all of me, say, Lord, today I retrace my step back. You have yeah, I have fallen, yeah, I have failed you, Lord. Take all of me, oh, all of me, Lord. You have Take all of me, take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You are the Take all of me, all 
Those of you that knows me, you find out for the past month, throughout this month, I stopped falling under the anointing. Let the people get stamina. Let spiritual substance enter into you. So I was playing more with the prophetic. Now I hear God say to me, but adventure there is something bothering your heart. Maybe it's a bad result. Maybe it's a family issue. God said, take it away from him. Listen, the way you see your God determines what you get from him. Never you exalt a situation more than the God you serve. Just take it away from you. Take your mind out of Just leave it. Leave it. Let it go. And just focus on him. Not irrespective of this, you are still God. Learn from Job. I know my demon leave it. I will still live in style. I will still graduate this university in style. My tomorrow is still better. I have not lost any years in God. I know we end well in life. That family issue will change. I will look for it very soon. I won't see it again. That pain will leave. That sickness will go. I will follow you, oh God. Yeah. 
of your hands, we will do this song with the lifting up of hands. God is changing situations already. You don't need to fall down. You don't need to get slain. Something is shifting. Something is changing. is already changing situations i don't want us to fall please just receive receive i've told you spiritual things are spiritual substances something is entering into you the bible says when no deliverance was coming when no change was coming john wanted to cry he said and i began to weep and an elder said no there is a lion that has prevailed and as long as he remains on the throne there is hope there is hope there is hope. He is the one that holds time. He can rewind the time for your sake. Time is in his hands. Seasons is in his hands. He can turn things for your favor. We do that song one more time as we close. Hey, speak of now God said to me you are here you are a final year you have elder ones that have finished school no job God said no 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 look up to him a change your whole situation will be different your story will be different you can still trust him you say yes my elder brother trusted him not in my elder sister trust him. yours can be different I beg you hold on to God here to hold on to him no matter what take the song again we look to Yahweh
walk. Wherever you desire to see God's hands at work, that area of your life that is a mockery, that area of your life that is a shame, that area of your family that is a reproach, I stand under the government of heaven. I declare a change. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare a change. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Beat your family. Beat any of your siblings. Beat your academics. Beat your finances. I stand on that God. I declare a change. Amen. God prove himself as God. May God prove himself as God. Amen. May God prove himself as God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Just thank you for what he has done for you tonight. Something's moving. Something's changing. Seas glory. Feels like hell's on the Something's moving. Something's changing. Some of you will go back to the hostel. You will see that F has changed to A's. That E has changed. Some of you, you came here. Your CGP was two point something. I don't know it will happen. I won't go to your department. I don't even know it. But you will go, you see it now three points. How? I don't know. But there is a hand. There is a hand. The Bible said they cause not the possession of the land of the land by their hand. But his mighty right hand. Some of you will go back, look at that situation. You will know it disappeared. You will know how God took care of it. You will know how it ended. That reproach is over. Tonight, under the governing authority of God, under the graces and the unctions of this meeting, that pain is gone. Amen. That secret tears ends tonight. Amen. God said to me, son, was talking to me yesterday those that came around just found that I was extremely sober he said son begin to heal my people with the arrows of the prophetic word heal my people that's why I said I don't want to fall people I want to speak to destinies I want to speak I want to speak heal my people that place that area of your life that is causing you pain Maybe you are academic. You know, you are sleeping. That's what you are thinking. All your family issue. On that God, I decree a change. Amen. I bring forth divine healing to that area. Amen. Your finances are healed. Amen. Your families are healed. Amen. Your academics are healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Leave this meeting joyful. Some of you, you will see some bubbling out of you. Bubbling, bubbling out of you. Live here joyful, confident. That there is a hand that holds my life. There is, I am not self-existing. It's only self-existing one. There is a hand that pilots my life. That holds my life. Lift up your hands and bless him for tonight. Just swift to him. Say something wonderful to him. Now hear me, hear me. I will not be doing much of the ministrations today. I beg you. The reason why I won't do that is because I don't want to stress myself so much. I will be ministering in RCF, Reading Christian Fellowship, on Sunday. They say they have an, an, an anointing, a semester anointing service. Titled Anointing for Enthronement. I beg you. I am heavily prepared for that meeting. Heavily prepared. That's the first student ministry I will accept the invitation since I came. So I am telling you, the meeting will be something else. I beg you, son. I think, what time is their services? What time is the service? 7.30, right? Latest 8 be there. I beg you, don't miss the meeting for anything. So I will continue my meeting there. That's why I'm shifting so many things because of our time, so I can go home. Please, this Sunday, I beg you, anointing for enthronement. Anointing. I, I think there will be an anointing service. So I'll be anointing the people. Don't miss it for anything. I beg if you can spare out time just for that one service. Spare out the time and come. Lift up your hands tonight. Let me bless you. The Lord releases his blessing upon you. Amen. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. Amen. You're going out and you're coming in is blessed. Amen. Decree fruitfulness all your ways. Amen. This week, 
let one testimony hit you after another. Amen. Unstoppable miracles. Amen. Mind blowing miracles. Amen. Uncommon favor. Amen. Uncommon favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please let's not forget our projects. The prayer project is still on. You take out one hour to pray for the ministry once a week at least. You can, you can get the pamphlet to see the prayer guide for many of the ushers. Then we have the prayer invited the project, invite a soul or win a soul a week. It's a project. All these projects we are doing, we are tagging it with a need. Lord, as we do this, we are challenging you. So you are expected to invite one person to the meeting every week and tag it to something. Lord, as I do this, this is what I anticipate you to do in my life. Do it consistently for three months. If nothing changes in your life, come and meet me. You know, any man can challenge you that heavily. You know my pain. If I say do anything, I beg you, do it with your heart. Just like Paul will say, if only you are listening to me. If I was an external minister, it is easy for me to lie. I can pack all your money right now and leave this place. And you won't see me again. It won't happen. And funny enough, next time they will still bring me. You forgot I said one, it didn't happen. But I am a sitting person. I can't run. So if I tell you do something, I beg you do it. Because I'm standing to watch the testimony comes out. Is that okay? Then we have the building project, project 20,000. You want to sow into the building project, 20,000 naira or more. Between the span of one year, you can sow it at in bits or at once, any way you want. Just between the space of one year. All right? Commit yourself. We've talked about kingdom responsibility. It's your job. Now, while here, even with the point that we have building projects, you can ask those in the, in the ministerial workforce. We have sown into two churches building projects. Two. In the next few weeks, you'll see some blocks will come for this building. I said, it's not my place. But I am smart. That's why I said, if you, if you are a, if you are doing devotion, you don't know God. You are not a Christian. In the next few weeks, with the way we are just starting, we are bringing some almost 200 blocks to this building. The money is ready. The best time to sow is in your pain. Because you want a change. Thank you, my Father. 